fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Mmm, you're going to love the big exciting news today. Now there are two brand new Betty Crocker cake mixes. There's chocolate malt and peanut delight. I'll bet you can hardly wait to try them, and I wouldn't blame you. They're just so good. Today, let me tell you about the chocolate malt. It's a wonderful new way to enjoy an old flavor that's a favorite with so many of us. There's honest-to-goodness delicious malted milk right in the mix. And, of course, there are all the other fine quality ingredients you choose yourself, like famous soft-as-silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. And because it is a Betty Crocker cake mix, Mom knows it's the easiest way ever to bake a perfect cake. So next time Mom goes shopping, be sure to remind her to get that brand new delicious treat, Betty Crocker's Chocolate Malt Cake Mix. You'll love it. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll sell The Lone Ranger and Toto walked down the main street of Tomahawk toward the Trails End Cafe. The Lone Ranger was not wearing a mask, but his clothes were travel-stained and dusty. There was nothing in his appearance to distinguish him from a thousand other cowboys who had ridden a long, hard trail and his hat was pulled low over his eyes to shadow his face. Trails end, only cafe in town. If Butch Carson and any of his men here, that's where we find them. <laughs> cafe, plenty crowded. The Lone Ranger and Toto entered the cafe. At the far end of the long room, there was a stage, and a woman of about 30 who had just finished singing was bowing to the applause of the ranchers and cowhands. We've come to the right place, Toto. That's Carrie Lane. Ah, who used to sing and dance. Butch Carson's girl. She wouldn't be working here if he weren't somewhere around. Tom to not see him. No, but there's Jake Nolan behind the bar. You look, Kimasabi. That sheriff just come in. Where's Jake? There he is. What's the matter, Bill? That's funny, the matter. Jake, take off your guns. What's that? You heard me. Take off your gun belt. Put it on the bar. Well, what's the idea? Are you arresting me for something? No, I can't arrest you. I haven't got any proof. But there's another way of stopping you and your own crew from killing my cows and running off my calf. We're going to settle this feud between us with our fists. I'll break you in two. Come on, outside. Come on, let's go. Bill and Jake led the way out of the cafe. The other men soon formed a hollow square in the street. Torches were lit. The sheriff and the cafe owner squared off. Jake was much the heavier of the two, and he put all his weight behind his first lunge. Bill knew that he had no chance if one of Jake's crushing blows were to land squarely. He fought coolly, watching for his openings, and then driving rights and lefts home with lightning speed. Jake was tiring, and the crowd realized that the tide of battle had swung in favor of the sheriff. Then suddenly, in avoiding one of Jake's vicious swings, Bill slipped and fell. Jake roared. In a second, the crowd knew he would jump on his fallen opponent, but before he could take a single step, a hand of steel grasped his shoulder and whirled him around. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Who's the stranger? Look what he's Get out of here. Just as soon as the sheriff's on his feet and not before. I'll show you. Not that way. Oh. The Lone Ranger sidestepped Jake's vicious swing and then drove a hard right to the cafe owner's jaw. Jake dropped to the ground. All right, come on, Toto. Uh-huh. Stranger, wait a minute. Jake's out cold. Stop him, somebody. Stop that hombre. He's gone, son. But it was a lucky thing for you. Yeah. He stepped in when he did. Yeah, I know that. Just look at those spurs of Jake's. If he didn't kill you, he'd sure spoil your looks. Yeah. 
We'll have to get him inside. I'll attend to that, Chief. Take him back to the office, man. Oh, and who are you? I'm Carrie, the new singer. Out of the way, boys. May I offer my congratulations, Chief? Right. I don't deserve any congratulations. You're alive. And while there's life, there's hope. <laughs> what did she mean by that? Mm, search me. But I sure didn't like the sound of that laugh. In the office of the cafe, Carrie bathed Jake's swollen jaw and applied a piece of steak to an eye that was rapidly turning black and blue. Who was that knocked me out? Stranger. Nobody seemed to know who he was. He left before anybody could find out. If he ever comes back, I'll break his head in. Aren't you asking for more trouble than you can handle? I'll show him. Well, somehow I don't think he'll be back. And anyway, Bill Desmond's the one you should be sore at. He was the one who started it. Yeah, the mangy coyote. And you wanted him to start it, didn't you, Jake? Only you were hoping he'd go for his guns. What are you talking about? You thought you could get rid of him, take his place. Well, I guess Butch wouldn't like it if I was sheriff, huh? I guess he wouldn't like to move in and get the kind of protection I could give him. Oh, I guess he'd like it a whole lot. Only you bungled the job. Now, how about taking a few suggestions from us? Uh, Butch will get rid of Desmond for me? In a way. In a way, he'll get rid of himself. I I know Sally. Look, the sheriff has nearly 20,000 head of cattle. He doesn't own enough land to graze a thousand. Oh, he sure does. I said own. He owns a hundred acres on this side of the river. All that range on the far side belongs to Silas Mason, the banker. Yeah, but he rents it to Desmond. And the lease is up at noon tomorrow. Mm, It'll be renewed. No, it won't be. Sometime before noon tomorrow, Mason will walk in here and offer to lease that range to you. You're loco. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Just leave it to Butch. We'll only need your help if things go wrong. Shortly after midnight, Silas Mason was awakened by a loud knocking at the front door of his home. He struggled into his clothes and hurried to answer it. After midnight, fine time to wake a man up. He opened the door. There were half a dozen men standing on the porch. All of them wore bandanas covering their faces. Outlaws! Get him, Joe. Yep. One of the masked men hit the banker hard behind the left ear with the butt of his gun. Now, give your hand with him. When the banker came to, he was lying on the ground near a small campfire. There were men sitting all around him. Uh, oh. About time you were showing signs of life, Silas. Who are you? What do you want with me? Brought you out here to discuss a business proposition. That's a likely story. It's the truth. You own the land across the river from the Bar D range, don't you? What about it? And you lease the grazing rights to Bill Desmond. That's right. The lease is up at noon today. We don't want you to renew it. Well, you just try and stop me. We intend to. You're going to lease the rights to Jake Nolan, Silas. How do you know he wants to lease my land? He will. He'll realize, just as you did, that it'll mean the end of Desmond's ranching in this county. That's what you want. You want to put Bill out of business? Yeah. You're going to Jake tomorrow morning and lease him your land. How are you going to make me? Killing me won't do any good. No. No, Silas. I won't do it. Have you forgotten your wife? My, my wife? She's been visiting in St. Louis. She's on her way home now, traveling by stage. You expect her either tonight or tomorrow. But lots of things can happen between here and Wilmot. It's a dangerous trail. You'd hold up the stage? And take your wife prisoner, Silas. You might never see her again. Of all the dirty... Don't say anything to Bill, Silas. I know what you're thinking. But he can't save your wife. You don't follow our orders. I will, I will. Good. You find the river trail half a mile south of here. Get going. Maybe you can make it back to town before the storm breaks. The Lone Ranger and Toto, who had been searching for Butch Carson's camp, found a cave on the banks of the river just as the storm broke. They were about to take shelter from the rain when Silver whinnied sharply. 
There was a lightning flash, and they saw a rider heading toward them along the river trail. In that instant of light, the horse went down. The rider went over his head into the fast-moving stream. Swiftly, the Lone Ranger pulled off his boots, watching for the man to come up. There he is. Ah. Turn, carry him down this way. There are rapids below. The Lone Ranger dove in. The man had been carried out to midstream. The Lone Ranger struck out toward him. The man was struggling desperately. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship a high. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Suddenly, as the Lone Ranger was swimming toward the drowning man, the man's head disappeared. In the next moment, the masked man felt a terrific wrench. A whirlpool had gripped him. It pulled him under, deeper and deeper toward the bottom. Instead of fighting against it, he swam with a pull. Down, down. At last, he felt the terrific clutch of the whirlpool relax. But now his lungs were bursting. He hit a rock. He pushed himself away with his right hand, and his left touched cloth, a coat. He grasped it firmly. He had the man's arm. He fought to the surface. At last, the air rushed into his aching lungs. He was just above the rapids now and 50 yards from shore, but there was rescue in sight. Silver, still saddled, had jumped into the river and was swimming toward his master. Good boy! The masked man took a firm hold on a stirrup. Back, Silver, back! The great horse struck out for safety. He reached the bank just above the rapids. Tonto pulled the lone ranger and his unconscious burden out of the water. Tonto recognized the man. Uh, this Silas Mason, Kimasabi, in banker in town. We take him inside cave. It was not until an hour later that the banker opened his eyes. Oh. Easy, Mason. Uh, you're masked. I'm not an outlaw. You're one of them. You followed me. No, I haven't been following you. Pat and I saw your horse fall. When you were pitched into the river, I went in after you. Yeah. You saved my life. Silver saved both our lives. Silver? Who's Silver? My horse. You call your horse Silver? And this Indian's name is Tonto? Isn't that right? And masked. You must be... Oh, no. That'd be too much to hope for. Uh, him, good friend. The Lone Ranger. Isn't that right? Uh, but even you can't help me, mister. No one can. I'd like to try... Why do you need help? I can't tell you anything. My wife, it, it would endanger her life. I've got to do what those crooks told me. You can trust me, Mason. You know that I wouldn't do anything to hurt your wife. You'll promise? Why, of course. Well, a little after midnight, there was a knock on my door. The banker told the Lone Ranger all about his capture and the outlaw's threat. When he had finished... If I promise you that no harm will come to your wife, Will you let me handle the situation? How? Oh. First, I want a note to the sheriff, telling him everything you've told me. No, that's the last thing in the world I'd consent to. Now, let me tell you exactly what I have in mind before you make your decision. I'll go to the sheriff at your At 11 o'clock the following morning, Jake Nolan pounded on the door of Carrie's cabin. 
And when Carrie opened the door... Well, Jake, the lease all signed? No, and it won't be. Look, it's only 11. I told you to stay at the cafe until he showed up. Silas won't show up anywhere. Why not? The sheriff just came into town leading the banker's horse. What are you trying to say? That Mason is dead. That he got thrown into the river last night on his way back from seeing Butch. Drowned? Yeah. That puts the kibosh in the whole scheme. No, no, it doesn't. If Silas is dead, the old lady owns the land. His wife? Of course. She's on the stage somewhere between here and Wilmont. We'll force her to sign the lease. Round up your best men. What for? Because they'll be needed. And so will you. Butch only has half a dozen men with him. I don't want to get mixed up in any holdup. No. No, all you want is the profit from it. Are you saying We that... thought the threat would be enough. It would have been if nothing had happened to Silas. Don't be so yellow. Who's going to recognize you with a bandana cover on your face? And why should you be afraid if I'm not? You're going to? Why not? I've got to show you where Butch is camped, so why shouldn't I get in on the fun afterwards? The sheriff rode into the tangled hills. He was hailed from a thickly wooded slope that rose sharply at the right of the trail. Ho, ho, ho. Come on, boy. Up we go. Come on, get it. He urged his mount up the slope. There, well hidden by the trees, he found ten of his hands and the lone ranger. Ho, 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 boy. See? They're coming. How many of them? I counted twelve. Jake, some of the toughs who hang around the trail's end, Carrie, and some I didn't recognize. Butch Carson and his men. Maybe so. Everything going according to schedule? Yes, we stopped the stage just outside of Wilmont. Mrs. Mason agreed to ride the horse we brought her the rest of the way to Tomahawk. And she and Toto are taking the long trail to the north. Good, that puts her out of danger. Yes. There's only the driver and five of your men on the stage now. And where are they? Waiting at the east end of the canyon. We'll start through when we hear Butch and his men coming. We? Yes, I'm going back to join them. You stay here until the gang rides by down below. Don't follow them too closely. The odds will be against you till we get there. We don't want them to know they're being followed. Right. I understand. I'll let us see you in the canyon. Easy. Send a big fella. One fella there. The canyon the Lone Ranger spoke of was about a mile long, but only about 30 feet wide, with rock walls that rose for hundreds of feet on either side. The masked man found the stage drawn up at the eastern end. Oh, oh, oh he's just sitting up. Well, mister, are we going to see some action? It looks that way. I'm going to tie Silver to the back of the stage. Uh, do you mind if I take the reins? Mind? You're plumb welcome. Aren't we going to wait here? No, I picked out a spot where the stage will block the trail. But you better check your guns and ammunition while there's still time. <laughs> After tying Silver to the rear of the stage, the Lone Ranger climbed to the box, gathered the reins, and drove the stage into the canyon. Get up there! Hold on! Get up! The team dashed around the first turn of the canyon, and a hundred yards farther on, the masked man pulled them to a stop, yanking hard on the left rein so that the stage skidded sideways. Ho, 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 ho. The men poured from the stage and took cover. The Lone Ranger jumped to the ground and unhooked the team. As he was leading them away, the outlaws rode into view. Here they come. Hold your fire for a minute. The Lone Ranger allowed the outlaws to open fire first. Then... Oh. The battle raged for five minutes. And then with nearly half his men wounded and realizing that Mrs. Mason was not on the stage, Butch Carson gave the order to retreat. Get mounted and get out of here. Foot swung into his saddle, but before the others could follow his example, the sheriff and his posse rounded the men behind them. Open fire and pinned them to their cover. Foot took a desperate chance. He wheeled his mount and rode straight for the stage. His horse leaped the tongue of the stage and thundered past the Lone Ranger, who made a desperate grab for the horse's bridle. The Lone Ranger missed, but in the next instant he had leaped to the saddle and was urging Silver in pursuit. <laughs> east of the canyon zigzagged down the side of the mountain. By the time the Lone Ranger had ridden out of the canyon, Butch had already disappeared around the first hairpin turn. But the masked man knew that he would soon reach the trail directly below him. So he headed Silver down the steep slope. All right, come on, boy. Easy now. Come on. 
He was only halfway down when Butch rounded into view on the lower trail. He took one shot at the Lone Ranger, but the rocky trail and the speed of his mount made it impossible to aim accurately. Butch concentrated on his riding. Silver was plunging down the steep slope. He was only about 20 feet above the lower trail when Butch flashed by. The Lone Ranger had his lariat ready. All right. The noose snaked out and settled over Butch. Back, Silver, back. Instinctively, Butch yanked on the reins and succeeded in slowing his mount a little. But even so, he was dragged from the saddle. His right hand was free of the noose, though, and he started to level his gun at the masked man. Oh, no, you don't. The Lone Ranger landed on top of him, forcing his arm back. back Butch go. tried to roll away, but Silver was keeping a taut line on the lariat. And the Lone Ranger continued twisting the outlaw's wrist until the gun fell from his hand. All right! All right, Butch. On your feet. You're going to jail the rest of your gang. By the time the Lone Ranger reached the canyon again, the posse had completed their roundup of the gang, and he turned his prisoner over to the sheriff. Get in contact with the nearest United States Marshal. The gang may have been planning to kidnap Mrs. Mason, but the stage is carrying United States mail, and that makes the whole up a federal offense. They'll be safer in a federal penitentiary. You won't need my help in getting them back to town. No, thanks, mister. We can handle them. Adios, then. Adios, Adios mister. Hello. One there. A fine thing when the law is in cahoots with crooks. Meaning? That hombre on the white horse. I thought that's who you had in mind, Jake. He's no crook. He wears a mask. Yes, and he rides a white horse called Silver. He's given his life to save this country from crooks like you and Butch. He doesn't ask any reward, not even thanks. When his job is done, he just rides away. What? Any idea who he is now? Leaping cactus. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll still uh, <laughs> feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.